Five years from now, my dream come true is we come back here and we will watch Quibbies, which we watch on our cell phones and we watch them in bite sizes. And so we're in the holiday season and all merry and cheer, but first we have a funeral to address. Our beloved Quibby has gone away from us, all, all the Quibbers out there. I know this has devastated the film community, obviously, uh, because most of you are out here quibbing left and right. Uh, so I kind of want to go over what exactly made Quibi fail in the first place, which I think there's a lot of key reasons people are kind of leaving out for some reason. And then two is how Quibi could have actually worked, because I think there's some good things that are there. So let's get straight into it. So one of the main things people love to throw out is how Quibi was such a stupid name from the get-go. Uh, which I think is the case with most new things that are thrown out. For instance, when TikTok was thrown out, people made fun of that as a name. People made fun of Peacock somewhat, and people still kind of do because it's not the most popular streaming service. So they were fighting an uphill battle no matter what. Now, what really is striking is what the talented team of quibbers, I guess, or quib developers, chose to make their target audience. And that comes from Jeffrey Katzenberg and Meg Whitman. Both of them, I think, do have a pretty good track record if you look at it. Meg Whitman has some dicey stuff, I will admit, especially uh, with HP. But Katzenberg has a pretty good track record with movie studios, especially. So doing something like Quibi for him actually seems like a very positive thing that a lot of producers with money could get involved in. Specifically Steven Spielberg, which by the way, Steven Spielberg is against Marvel movies, but out of nowhere, he's just like, hey, I love to quib, I'm a quibber. <laughs> What? So there's three main reasons that I think Quibi failed specifically. Two of them I think are very obvious and most people point out. It didn't have too much investment. I know everybody points to, I think it's $1.6 billion, but when you're planning to do a streaming service for long term, just like I showed you in that clip, they expected to last multiple years from now and be the Netflix of whatever their 10 minute content was. And it's fine if you have a small investment and you understand that going in and you don't literally burn money like Quibi was doing. All you care about is money. This town deserves a better class of criminal. And I'm gonna give it to them. On some type of content, they were throwing six million dollars per hour of content that we're making. And I'm sure you're thinking, oh, well, six million dollars and they get what six episodes of their content which is insane if you look at what game of thrones was spending on their seasons on their episodes uh game of thrones season one which is much longer than an hour mind you was 10 million dollars uh so i big goofed here it was 60 million for the entire season whoops oh well here's the video and another thing that killed quibi was the no free option at all even with ads this is something that I have actually praised Peacock for, even though it's kind of out of nowhere and nobody really knows what it is. At least it has a free option with ads. I mean, if I wanted to watch, say, Everybody Hates Chris or The Office, they're there for free. And I applaud them for that somewhat, for at least understanding, hey, if you want to get subscribers into this, you, you can't be charging $5 for an ad version of Quibi. On top of this, uh, because there was no free option, it sort of bleeds into this subcategory. There was no presence at all of Quibi in the zeitgeist. So my mom, for instance, knew nothing about Quibi unless I mentioned to it as like, aha, have you heard about this as like a joke? Um, but other than that, there's no tent pole that you point to. And it's like, that's, that's Quibi's bread and butter, you know? And even more so, the only thing that Quibi was known for was being the stupid 10 minute thing and everybody made fun of it, which actually can kind of work in your favor and I'll get into it a little bit more about that particular point. Now the main point that I wanna harp on here that everyone <laughs> seems to be avoiding in all of this for whatever reason, uh, Katzenberg says in multiple interviews, roll clip. 
instead of TV, in addition to TV? In addition to it, if you're 25 to 30 years old, which is our core audience, you and targeted very specifically 25 to 35 year olds. That's right. Quibi's target demographic uh, was between five years of age, which is like shooting yourself in the foot six times in a row. Imagine I'm building a restaurant and I say, oh, uh, well, I'm going to only accept people who make $100,000 or $200,000. Only that amount, if that's their salary the year, they can come to my restaurant. Why would I do that? And the craziest part is you look at this 25 to 30 year old range and it doesn't necessarily seem like a particular demographic. I mean, if they wanted to go for the quote unquote millennial demographic, then they'd stretch this out to be a little bit larger. But they said specifically 25 to 30. And operating in those confines, there's only a set amount of things that you can do. And it's not Chrissy Teigen's law court. Did your ex borrow your phone and return it with a cracked screen? You may be entitled to a cash settlement. So with that out of the way, how do we fix Quibi? How do we get everybody to quib with us together? Now, to do that, we have to examine what makes a streaming service work. And what's interesting here is Quibi was also tying into uh, platforms like YouTube, TikTok, Snapchat. They repeatedly mention this over and over. And here's the thing. I think there's actually something they could have pivoted to if they had more of a social media presence on their platform, if people could talk about the shows in their actual platform, which by the way, multiple things that they were planning to do did not work at launch. Everything that they promised wasn't there. Like for instance, they mentioned wanting to do sports, esports, news, uh, just a slew of different topics that could have probably worked in 10 minute bites. Now, for what actually makes a streaming service work, just to get that out of the way, a well-defined demographic is always a great thing. For instance, uh, if you look at Netflix's demographic, it's 17 to 69 year olds. That's right. How many years is that? How many more than five is that? <laughs> also a tent poll release that everyone can sort of reason why they're buying this service is really important as well. Now, I, I know this might seem like a minor thing, but at this point, there's a decent amount of people that just have Netflix because Stranger Things season four is coming. And there's people that pay $70 for Disney Plus just to watch The Mandalorian. And I'm not saying Quibi has to come up with that type of caliber show, but they at least have to have something that stands out and says, hey, this is what we're offering. This is our main thing we're pushing. And I'm gonna be honest, that was probably Chrissy Teigen's court. Did your neighbor hit your car after a long night out? Did your friend poison your house plant? They bet a lot of money that that would work. <laughs> now, what did Quibi do well before we get into fixing Quibi? Because I think there's actually a couple things that people kind of discredit. For one, they had a slew of talent, sort of. And I say sort of because people like Liam Hemsworth, the Jonas Brothers, Sophia Turner, Chrissy Teigen, Chance the Rapper, Offset. Uh, have you heard of LeBron James, Ariana Grande? Uh, they were all a part of Quibi. And you're probably wondering, hey, wait, LeBron, what? That's right. LeBron had a documentary on Quibi but no one knows it exists because no one has Quibi. So that's one of the things I would definitely push. When Quibi first came out, the three shows that I think I remember seeing pushed uh, featured Liam Hemsworth, who's Thor's brother, I guess. That's the only thing people are like, uh, Hunger Games, maybe, maybe they know him from that, or Miley's boyfriend. Uh, the other one I remember is the Dane DeHaan uh, thriller show, which Quibi. Dane DeHaan is not a superstar. And then three, again, Chrissy Teigen's court. <laughs> they spent a lot of ad revenue on these three particular shows. They also did a ton of stuff with Anna Kendrick's show, which I think at that point, people kind of were off Quibi. And there's a couple of shows that do make sense. For instance, remaking Punked does work, and I'll tie into that later, but having Chance the Rapper remake Punked doesn't make the most sense? 
I mean, I love Chance the Rapper. Ooh, I, I love think my he wife. has one of my favorite albums of all time. But is he known as a prankster or a comedian or anything that would make you think, oh yeah, he's going to replace Ashton Kutcher. I'm sure he does a good job, but if you're marketing that show, you want to get someone like, for instance, Kevin Hart, who's in Die Hard. And by the way, the supporting cast member in Die Hard is Gotti's own John Travolta. That's right. You're hearing the words coming out of my mouth correctly. They got Kevin Hart and John Travolta together. <sighs> Never change, Quibi. And number two, I think it is interesting that they had new content, or at least a combo of the YouTube and Netflix format as well, in that they were trying to do 10-minute episodes. And I know people completely make fun of this, of course, but there's a lot of shows that shifted to a longer format or a miniseries, and they've actually done really well. For instance, The Queen's Gambit is a huge show. Game of Thrones was a huge show. It's a longer episode, and I know people think, oh, they... They think we're dumb for doing the shorter episodes. And I think the part that Quibi did overestimate is the fact that most people will probably pause a Netflix show if they're watching it and just already make it in chunks already. And the third one I want to bring up is they had a free trial and it did well and they committed to advertisement over and over as much as they shouldn't have in certain places. For instance, if the audience you're trying to reach is 25 to 30 year olds, why would you advertise at the Oscars when only boomers are watching? What are you doing? So I want to throw out things that Quibi could have done that actually would have been pretty cool. For instance, they mentioned, oh, well, people are busy. They don't necessarily want to watch long form TV shows that we've been used to. And I think there is some truth to that. The problem is people hear that and they think something like Game of Thrones, they want split into different chunks. But that's not what Quibi ever was trying to do. Now, if they split news, sports, esports even, or pop culture into 10-minute bites of everything you missed from the week, and you had your, say, Quibi music of the week, and they'd recommend you new songs, I think that would be actually a really good use of that platform. Now, for instance, sports. Uh, if you're going for the 25 to 30-year-old demographic, guess what those people are doing? Cutting the cord. They are not paying for cable and guess what's holding on to cable? Sports. So if you did a 10 minute sports, little shortened version of everything that happened in say the NFL Sunday, because guess what? Snapchat has that, but every time I click on it, it says something like, you'll never believe what this player did. And it's someone like grabbing the back of their pants. And like, there's an emoji, like a, a hundred emoji, like on their butt. I don't want to click that. I feel like Snapchat uh, does a really bad job of creating that type of content on there, but it exists. And if Quibi did that well, then you'd be replacing whoever's watching that. I think at this point, people understand how important a community making jokes and posts about something really does create an audience and people engaging in whatever platform you're doing it on. The reason a lot of people checked out TikTok was because some random guy drank cranberry juice riding a skateboard to Fleetwood Mac. And while that probably makes no sense why that rose to popularity out of nowhere, and people resonated with that and they said, hey, might as well check out TikTok even though I've been making fun of it for two months. And the thing I wanna point out about this is one of the main shows people know Quibi for is a show that wasn't even on Quibi. It's the Jack Sparrow Hype House. Uh, and if you've heard about this, it's incredible. So this is a fake thing that someone created that people actually bought was a Quibi show. This was a reality TV show that quote unquote streamed on Quibi that placed four Jack Sparrow impersonators in a single family home who were eliminated if they broke character. Now, obviously this sounds like a dumpster fire, unless it's played for comedic effect. And I think Quibi actually did this very late in its life cycle because there was a show, I think it was like Ken with the Kardashians where it was just some random guy that was like the Kardashian cousin who was placed into that world. I think that actually kind of works. The Kardashians are very popular. So that does seem like a good type of market for them. But I think things like the Jack Sparrow house 
could create good content that gets spread around to really intrigue people. And you make something like that on the free version of Quibi because that's again something that I'm going to harp on over and over. If you want to bring in a user base at this point, you have to keep doing it for free. Can't do a 90 day trial because people are too smart for that now. They're not gonna stick around to buy Quibi for a year. So another thing that I think would have been really good for the 25 to 30 year olds is guess what was really popular in that age range at this current moment? MTV. So you could do an MTV rewind, you could play previous content that was on MTV that would bring nostalgia into people. Hey, remember this on MTV? It's on Quibi this week or whatever. And then you could also do like a, the VH1 countdown where you could play old music and that could be 10 minutes where you're playing older music that people have nostalgic attachment to. And this is only a suggestion if they're keeping with the five year absurd age range where 25 to 30 year olds are your target demographic, which is stupid. Another thing that actually could work for 10 minutes, guess what is already 10 minutes? Adventure time. One of the things that works really well for a 10 minute bite sized consumption is animation. And tons of people can do short form animation and long form animation. But guess what? Animation doesn't really pay on YouTube. Animation doesn't pay for animators. If Quibi came out and was the place for animators to go to and was paying them well off the bat and had set up contracts with them. And again, I don't necessarily understand all the background of that, but I think if they were coming up with dope animations over and over, then you get a lot of the animated crowd as well. And maybe I just want that because I would like people to get paid for all of their great short films that they're making and then Quibi could show that stuff and market that to people as well. And I think it could be a really positive endeavor for them. Like one of the reasons I have Hulu is because it has so many cartoons and anime and just a ton of great animation on it. Now, another thing they could do is really target after canceled series. And part of this, I will admit, may have been a contractual nightmare where they couldn't secure the rights to anything. But for instance, if they quibbed like Firefly, I know everyone wouldn't necessarily want to watch Firefly that way, but at least it would have returned in some capacity. Another one to mention is The Get Down. Even though it was a Netflix show, it was canceled by Netflix. So maybe you could get some of the cast together off a lower salary and just make one season, 10 episodes, 10 minutes. It's not the worst idea just to, you know, bring the gang together at a lower cost because it's on Quibi. So I feel like they really need to understand who they were marketing to. I mean, when everybody was given Chrissy's Court, and I hate to keep harping back on that, but that's the one that I feel like multiple people were making fun of because Chrissy's Court isn't necessarily going to be a show that everyone loves. Another thing that I think Quibi really could have worked on is if you get new talent that is wanting to embrace this new shorter form. So for instance, going to a lot of festivals and buying the ideas to say short films to be a Quibi series. Or if you took a long form film at a festival and then converted it into multiple episodes. I'm not saying it would be perfect, but that would be way better than burning $6 million an hour. So why do I care about this? Well, because it kind of interests me a little bit. I don't think streaming services are necessarily going to go away. And it's always interesting to see something try something new, which as much as people have clowned Quibi for, it was trying to break what we sort of understand with TV and TV shows and long form TV shows. I mean, every TV show I feel like that is serious or like HBO level is an hour long at this point. And I did find the idea intriguing of, hey, it's just a 10 minute chunk. I watch Adventure Time all the time because I can get in and out of there in less than 15 minutes for one episode. I think this also could work for live action. It just really hasn't been tried before. But it is going to be interesting what the streaming wars bring us in the future, which is going to be a video that I'm going to be working on for the next two weeks. If you want to check that out, make sure to stick around. It's going to be about who I think is going to win the streaming wars, who will come out on top, all that good stuff. Apple Plus, Netflix, Hulu, HBO, Crackle, Hallmark Channel, Peacock. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to... Tubi. Tubi's in there too. Amazon Prime. Uh, 
hey, throw in Quibi there. Maybe they can make a comeback. But that's going to do it for this video. It was more uh, lower key, I guess, this week on the death of our beloved Quibi. So this was actually right as my camera uh, pooped out, funny enough. Um, I say lower key, and this turned out to be a 20 freaking minute video. What am I doing? I don't know. I tried to edit this down. Uh, whoops. Sorry for longer video, I suppose. Normally I try to I try to keep it to a quib uh, with the videos that I'm doing. But hey, if you like this, let me know. Uh, we're also doing a uh, small YouTuber awards with some other YouTubers. Uh, so make sure to check that out. Stick around for all that good stuff. Also, here's my cat on my back. Again, thank you guys for checking out this video. Later, haters.